IELTS Writing Task 1, Lesson 1. In this lesson, I'll quickly explain what we're going to do on this video course for Writing Task 1. Similar to what we did um, for Task 2 in the Task 2 lessons, my aim is to give you methods and techniques to look at the task, to break it into parts, and to give you a good approach, good methods for those parts. So, for example, of course, we'll look at the different types of writing task one question. Um, a few things to remember before we start. The writing task one, the task is to describe um, a figure, some kind of graph, chart, diagram that you see. Your task is to describe it and write a report on it. You are not supposed to give your opinions. You don't know why the line on a graph goes up or goes down. You haven't got the research. All you see is the graph and you describe what you see. This we would call a report. It's the de description task. So no opinions, first of all. And another important thing before we get going, I'll just say this now, no conclusion. Because a conclusion is like a final opinion, a final judgment. So we're never going to put a conclusion in writing task one. You can put a summary in writing task one. Examiners call this the overview, but it's the same as a summary. So if you want to put something general at the end of your essay in writing task one, let's call it a summary and not a conclusion. So I've said that writing task one is a report. It's a describing task. We have no conclusion, but we do have a summary. And we're going to look at um, the different types of question. In fact, I'm going to define them as six different types, which I'll show you in a moment. And then I'll give you techniques for those six types, and we'll work on an example question for each one. I said we were going to look at the six question types for writing task one. So here they are. Line graph, bar chart, pie chart, table, a diagram that's comparing things, or a diagram that's showing a process. I consider a map to be a type of diagram, so maps are included in either number five or number six. Now, I always ask my students, what do numbers one to four, line graph, bar chart, pie chart, and table, have in common? I've highlighted those four in green because they're very similar. The reason is, the answer is that they have one thing in common, which is that they all show numbers. When you're describing a line graph, bar chart, pie chart, or table, you're just describing something that shows numbers. People often ask me, is there some special language that I need to know for pie charts or for tables? The answer is no. There's no special language. The language for those four types is exactly the same. It's number language. And the only things you have to do really are three things. You might have to describe one number, or for more than one number, you might have to compare. So you need some comparing language. You need to know how to compare numbers in a sentence. And the final thing with numbers is to be able to describe changes or trends. That's where you use your increase, decrease language. Those are the only three things in terms of language that we need to really worry about. Describing numbers, comparing more than one number, and describing these changes and trends. In fact, number five, the diagram, you're using very similar language, describing and comparing things on a diagram. Of course, there are no numbers, but the comparing language is going to be very similar. The only one that has different language where you need to use something different is the process diagram. And we'll talk about that in a lesson dedicated to the process diagram questions later in this course. But in terms of language, just remember that it's fairly simple. We've got four types that are all the same, just showing numbers, and there's only this one type where we need to look at some slightly different language uh, items or structures. Moving on from question types to essay structure. 
I'm going to show you now the four paragraph structure that I always use on my blog, my website and with my students here in Manchester. If you've followed my blog lessons you should already know this. Here are the four paragraphs that I suggest. Introduction, overview which you can call summary if you want, the examiners call it an overview and then two paragraphs of details. Um, no conclusion you notice, I said that earlier in this lesson, but if you want you can put the overview at the end, we can have a summary at the end. I personally prefer to put it second because I know how important the overview is for your score, so I do it just after the introduction, but it makes no difference, you can put it at the end as a summary if you want, just don't begin with in conclusion, begin with in summary or um, it is clear that something that shows this is a general summary of the information. Now moving on, the introduction, what do we do? Very simple, one sentence, paraphrase the question. So you take the question and you go through it bit by bit, changing the words if you can, maybe change the order. You don't have to change everything, just try to change um, the, the key words in there. Anyway, moving on, the overview or summary, what do we do? Well, my advice is this is very important, so I give it two sentences. And in those two sentences, you're looking to explain or describe, sorry, the main general things. So look for two main things, two main points. You'll see how what I mean in, in more detail when we actually do some questions later on this course. Then finally, we have two paragraphs about the details. This is where you include numbers and you do your comparisons, your describing trends if there are trends shown. Sometimes people ask me, why do we need two paragraphs? Well, the simple answer is, this makes you organize or group the information better. If you can, um, for example, if you've got numbers, you might put all the, the higher numbers in one paragraph and the lower numbers in another. Or you might put the first half of the period in paragraph three and the second half of the period of years in paragraph four. Just grouping and organizing, this will help your score for coherence and cohesion. Makes your structure look better. And that's it. No conclusion, remember. That's the structure and I've shown you the types of questions. In the rest of this course we're going to go through those different question types. So next lesson, next week, we will start with the line graph question.